Marlin Model 80C. These things were around from 1941 to about 1971. This is a 1965 vintage detachable magazine, 22 caliber bolt action. This was Marlin's bolt action for a bunch of years. There were a few incarnations of these. Let's uh, get into a little history and talk about it. As promised, we're back with the uh, next Marlin in line. Now, let's just take over right where we left off. We had this patent out on the table, messing around with the 88DL, and I realized I had made a mistake. I lumped this in and said, right, it has that extractor. I was thinking of a different rifle. I was thinking of the 80C. So we'll do a little comparison um, of... Uh, the timelines between the two, between the 80C and the 88DL, you just watch the 88DL. So you have those, you actually have those dates there. But this patent was for the extractor, which um, if you remember on the 88, I don't know how I forgot about this whole mess. I think the whole bolt handle thing messed me up because there's a patent for that. But this patent, even though it's from the same guy, was not for that. It was for this rifle this is that patent we'll, we'll take a look at it again later i don't want to start off the video right away on a patent but that's kind of like what made me say you know what let's just do this video right away this guy another pre-68 this is a 1965 vintage 22 caliber this time we're not long rifle only with these bolt actions we were able to do short long and long rifle and i think this guy i think this uh tr robinson jr i don't have it printed out unfortunately but you could take a look if you put in a patent, put in this patent number into Google Patents, 2465553, right? You'll get this patent, and then you'll see his name. Just click on his name, and there's one for feeding mechanism for bolt-action rifles. And although it's for like a, I think it's for like a 30 caliber, it might be like 30 or 6 something. It's for a big bore, but that is the same mechanism used here to be able to pull from the magazine shorts, longs, or long rifles. And it's just a conventional look. It's not the magazine. The magazine is a conventional looking magazine that just holds the rim. And it's just got a flat follower. Nothing crazy. There's no feed ramps on here. Nothing. And even in here, there's no crazy feed ramp. There it is. Just the regular. Just something about, he patented something about how the cartridge came off the magazine and was controlled by the bolt where it would just slide it right in there where you didn't have any problems and and i tried it it's it feeds shorts just fine it works perfectly So, uh, so it takes shorts, longs, long rifles. Capacity of the magazine is eight. 22-inch barrel on this guy. There's a couple of different variations. Uh, there's a 24-inch barrel for some of the older ones. Uh, micro groove on here also. And uh, the price listed by Marlin in 1965 was $38.95. That was in 1965, uh, the year this was produced. 
Um, I'm going to show you the three variants right here. I found this on a website where, that sold uh, parts. And the reason why this guy put these three up there is because he's like, he had to be sure you know which model you have because the parts are not interchangeable in a lot of the a lot of the parts are not interchangeable so you had to be sure are you buying that for the top rifle the middle rifle or the bottom rifle now pay careful attention to on these three for things like the cocking pieces this is an identifying feature the cocking pieces the trigger guards the trigger guards are very important there's like a stamped steel looking one and then there's one that just looks like regular more modern steel or plastic i don't know or it's just like maybe it's aluminum but it's just an oval and then there's the bottom one which is mine the 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 third series which is a swept back looking oval it's an oval with like a uh you know it was a little bit of a little bit of a uh, aerodynamic look to it let's say um so you could use those things to uh to determine which model you have but again i'm not sure if the bolts are interchangeable on them like i don't think they are so you could probably go by those um there's also differences in the shape of the stocks you could see that some are fatter than, than others um but this guy is the third version and uh let's take a look in the marlin book let's get this guy uh off the table here take a closer look in a minute but so where were we here here we had semi-automatics this is i'm literally doing this video right after so and then here's the model 60 99 into the 60 and uh, these were made up to modern day so that would be the end of the semi-automatic section um, and then bolt action rifles again we're starting in the same exact spot there was one, this model 65, this predates the 80C, and this was in the 30s, 35 to 37. And uh, there was a, there's a single shot rifle also called the model 100 as a single shot. But this 80 comes into play right around here. You see the early ones had finger grooves like this and uh, they went through several incarnations a few different uh, incarnations and i think the earlier ones were heavier they kind of like would have reminded me more of what the 88 dl was like very heavy and thick this one a little bit lighter a little bit more modern feeling than the 88 dl is it definitely feels a little bit lighter I have a feeling that these original 80s were just as heavy and, uh, you know, robust feeling. But it's kind of cool to have a mix of both, you know. And um, I dated this thing to 65 in an interesting way. They have, they have a breakdown here. Let's see, where is it exactly? Hmm. See, it goes through a bunch of different uh, versions of this 81. I must have been back. I must have passed it. Must have been on the first page. Yeah, sorry, it was on the first page. So this is where we go down and we figure out exactly where, uh, exactly where we fall. When we get up to 52 here, New patented extractor introduced in models 80 and 81. That's 1952. So what was our extractor patent? So that was introduced in 52. This was filed in 46, granted in 49. Introduced on these rifles in 52. So right away I knew I'm 52 and up just because of that. Because if you take a look at the bolt on here, um, if you take a look at the bolt we have that extractor right here. It's this collar that snaps around and uh, very, very simple cost cutting kind of feature. It just has the two extractors on either side there and uh, just uses just this one spring metal piece instead of uh, 
that whole mechanism, you know. And uh, and then just looking down here, ramp front sight added. I'm like, hmm, I don't have a ramp front sight. I just have a dovetailed, huh? So that's interesting. And as I'm going through, then when I get here, gold plated triggers added to the 80 and 81 and 64. And I'm like, oh, there you go. I got a gold plated trigger. And this isn't the deluxe model. There was a deluxe, just like how the 88 is a deluxe. There was an 80 DL. There was an 80 deluxe. This Now I have the standard one. That's why it's kind of cool to have, you know, you mix it up a little bit. The semi-auto is the deluxe. The Bolt one will be the standard. You kind of try to cover all the different variations, uh, model to model, and um, to duplicate as little as possible and have, like, you know, a wide array of different kinds of models. So it's kind of like a perfect complement. But... I didn't stop at 64. When I got the 65, I saw this. This was pretty cool. The 80C, among these other two, but the 80C, shown without ramp-type front sight in the catalog. Um, and the 80DL, the Deluxe, and the 81 Deluxe. The 81 had a tube magazine. So you see, again, here we go. We went, we're also, we don't have the tube. We have the box magazine. So it's... The complete mirror image of the 88DL, kind of, you know what I mean? It has every other feature. So now instead of the tube magazine, which was here, it was a tube magazine that was conventional. It was up here. But um, they went with the, um, they, they discontinued the DL, the Deluxe, and the 81 Deluxe. So they just, in 65, this was the only one available. Gold trigger and... It's shown in the catalog without the ramp front sight, and there we go. That's how I dated this one to 65. Sometimes that's that's how you got to do it. That's what you got to go through. Now, check it out. I want to show you something cool here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Um, this thing had a couple of problems. Number one, this... Uh, should I drop this thing out of the stock? I don't know if it's even really necessary. Oh, why not? It's always necessary. You guys are sitting at home, and you're like, of course it's necessary. What's wrong with you? You saw what it looks like in there. I didn't. So uh, it's just this one screw, even though we have a trigger guard and we have a couple of screws attached to this plate down here. It's just this one main screw is the takedown screw, and the action just falls right out, which most of these Marlins do. It's pretty cool. It's not hard to take them apart to clean them. And the actions are so super simple. But um, these two screws right here were loose. And this safety, when, when I was contemplating getting it, one of the things that was bothering me was that this I thought was broken. I don't mind if safeties are broken. I was like, you know, all right, so I know the safety doesn't work. Still not the greatest thing in the world if a safety doesn't work. But, I mean, you know what I'm talking about. You're, you're shooting it. You're aware of it. Um, you know not to, like... Let it fall into someone's hands who might rely on a switch that doesn't necessarily do anything. But these two screws were loose, and that's what was causing it to just flop back and forth. The problem with it flopping is that when you go to shoot, it could just slide forward. Then you pull the trigger, you get nothing. It slides back. It was just free to just slide wherever it wanted to interrupt trigger movement. But just by, I took it down out of the stock here and just saw, oh, these are just finger tight. They were like finger loose. So I'm like, there you go. They were flopping around. And it's a very simple mechanism. You see the notch in here. It just rides on a... It just uses the springiness of the steel. So I actually tightened them down pretty good to make it tight because um, I just wanted it to be, that, you know, a very positive engagement. And it, and it works good. The second problem was the uh, ejector. Where is the ejector? Here it is. Now let me get a... I need a pointer. Let me get a pointer. I gotta leave a designated pointer like right here. It's gonna be a dirty pointer because I used to use it to clean stuff, but you're gonna have to deal with my dirty pointer. So here's the ejector right here. With some of these Marlins, this is exactly what it was. It was just a curved piece of metal that looked like a paper clip. And it just stuck up in just the right spot to fit uh, in the recess right here in the bolt so you see this recess so that wire would ride right here in this channel and when the bolt was open far enough it would protrude through here at the right time at the right you know cycle of the bolt to push right through here and kick the round out that's why this one is kind of like a clip over 
And this one is kind of like a hold on to the rim look. Because this would hold on to the rim to flip it out. And this is kind of like more like a locating one. Uh, that's why they're designed that way. That's why they look different. And uh, the problem was that this was bent down. And because it was bent down, it wasn't riding through this channel where it was coming up out of this area right here. It was kind of coming up lower down here where you could see where the rim goes the rim covers this this little teeny cutout piece is where that paper clip looking head of that metal has to poke right through there and it wasn't so it needed to be adjusted now what bent it down i'm going to tell you right now what bent it down i know because i could tell by putting the bolt back in exactly what could have and most likely did transpire this bolt, unlike some, this rotating head right here, it can fit all the way forward, all the way home, no matter how it's orientated. There's nothing to key it a certain way, except for that ejector, but that's just a skinny piece of metal. If it's not riding in this channel, this reg any other part of the bolt right here will just bend it down and it will stay that way so you have to make sure that this recess right up on top right here is riding right into here and this is cool this is kind of like what holds the bolt in place kind of thing so in other words when we're putting this back together back together let's excuse me, let's zoom out a little bit we're putting this back together we have to make sure that this is going straight this thing on top right here we have to make sure we're lining that directly up with that clip if that's lined up then the bottom is lined up and we're just going to push it straight do we have to pull the trigger to get it past this point we're just going to be very careful to make sure it stays straight see that it comes it's coming out facing that and it's that is right in the channel right there if it wasn't you would just bend it down with the bolt and then you'd pull the bolt you'd be like oh it's not closing you pull the bolt back and that would stay that way and as it is like this let's get out our realistic snap caps once again where are they Realistic snap caps to the rescue. Let's do some function testing. We lost the head of one. I don't mean to be, uh, you know, doing a disservice to them. These things are awesome, but I am beating crap out of them. I am torture testing them. And I'm being honest with you. One of them, it got, uh, it was, it was really the fault of the rifle. But that's what function testing is all about. Beating the crap out of these and not beating the crap out of your skull with, uh, you know, rounds that inadvertently go off. Um, because even if a live round gets stuck in the bore, let's say, and you have to like use a dowel to shove it out, or you're still banging around and messing around with a live round. And, um, and uh, yeah, I had a rifle. I was working with a rifle. In between these two videos, I actually had time to sit down with one of the next Mossberg examples that we're going to be looking at and I uh, had a little bit of an issue with it and had a round get stuck had you know there were some a little bit of some bore issues that uh, but I fixed them and that's what the function testing is for that's what these things are for and they're definitely not going to last forever so eight rounds go in here and look we can we could show you even now with it of course how this mag works so there's a channel in the mag right here see that that space right there that's it right there that fits in right here and uh clip clips oh that's right it is difficult to load a full mag with the bolt closed um but uh, that this right here it has a catch on it see that catch on the edge that's how simple these mags are it just clicks in like that and then there's a button down here that just lifts this up so you can see that catch right there very simple but it locates the mag wonderfully look at how perfect it's in there uh not knocking around and uh here's our uh, feeding 
it's uh we're gonna lose them all right let's position this where they hit me gotta love it this is a good one this rifle feeds good and let me tell you these are getting beat up and most rifles most rifles would balk at these uh, snap caps these snap caps have reached a stage in their life where uh, if you're having some problems with feeding you got to imagine that it could be the dented up snap caps and not necessarily the rifle um, but you can tell a really good quality feeder like one of these ones that will feed anything when they feed your beat up snap caps and this guy is one of those this thing is a feeding tank so this this design this patented design i'm going to see i'm going to pull up that patent if i could find it i'm going to put it right up on the screen here for you if i could find it again but uh you shouldn't have a problem with it but i'll see if i could if i find it i'll put it up this i'm sure carries through to this rifle even though this is for a big bore and i'm pretty sure it was this guy tr uh, robinson jr i'm pretty sure so let's see let's uh Let's put this thing back to back home but I don't want to take it apart again so if you don't mind stick with me while I just uh, give it a little bit of a uh, wipe down of uh, hand oils and there we go and it's as simple as uh, just literally drop it right in here a boom there it goes it beds these marlins they they do bed nice with these uh these stocks are very very high quality and the fitting on them is always good and this is uh you know this is the third version this is like getting into the mid 60s now when uh you know there were people like they don't make them like they used to was the expression that started to pop up because uh you know things were made a little bit less uh you know is it was very difficult to to keep um to keep competitive in the market uh with how much some things cost to produce around this time is when that started to all kick in but um its functionality did not suffer that is for sure and it and it feels it feels quality don't get me wrong i'm just saying you could see the uh you could see the change starting to come and uh, we have grooves here for scoping out. If you really, if I want to get crazy and start switching scopes around, I'm sure this thing would be just as deadly accurate. Oh, not sure. I'm telling you, here's some shooting video of this guy. Um, you want to talk about heritage. This 88DL heritage definitely carried through. Um, the cycling was smooth. The feeding was was flawless it wasn't a single issue it felt good in my hands it felt solid and i'm pulling these targets back and i'm looking at them and they were absolutely it was it was absolutely stunning accuracy we've spoke about this before where you really can only talk about accuracy if you bench a rifle and, uh, and you test it that way where it's like moving. And you can really test how well its accuracy is. You're using a human being. The human being is an aspect. So all I could really say is that both of these were accurate as hell for me. Um, somebody else could pick them up and not be able to hit the paper. Just because of maybe it has something to do with the angle, the sight radius. The, I mean, who knows? Who knows? But... These, both of these worked for me, uh, and one had a scope, one was open sight, so you can't just say like, well, yeah, an indoor one with a scope, anybody would be great, no, I'm telling you, both of these guys are definitely accurate rifles for me, awesome, and uh, I loved, I love, uh, I love shooting both of them, it's nice, you take both of these, you just have like Marlin Day, and you just go with uh, both of these guys, semi-auto and Bolt. It's making me think that maybe a Marlin Lever Action 22 is, uh, I gotta look at what's, what's around, look at my Marlin book under Lever Action and see what they were putting out around these years. And maybe that'll, uh, be coming to the Mill Serp Garage stable soon. We will see. So, uh, 
yeah, a little double header right there with Marlon. Hope you guys enjoyed. Um, listen, uh, go back and watch the, the previous video that's uh, only from uh, just recently on the 88DL. Um, if you're interested in this one, of course, because uh, notoriously you put one video right after another. And just like history has shown to me that the first video hardly gets any hits. Um, everyone always just kind of like filters towards your last one. So you got to kind of like leave a little bit of space in between. But I've done these like trifectas before. Like the third one is really the only one that gets used. But then after a long time, then just YouTube's recommendations kind of get views in for everything. But just right off the bat, I noticed that they kind of like miss when you do one right after another. They kind of miss the first one, you know. So take a look back and uh, share them. Send them around to your friends. Get the viewership there for them because I uh, really love to be able to see uh, people getting into this. And, uh, thanks for the new subscribers, all you new subscribers, and um, my faithful subscribers. And I'll see you all soon. I got some real cool stuff on the horizon. Like I said, I was even just doing research in between these two videos for what, what's coming up next. We got another bolt action shotgun. I'll tell you that. And I think that's actually what's next is the bolt action shotgun. You're going to love this. This is obscure and weird. And uh, we're going to talk about some sick history uh, that involves Crossman. How do you like that? Crossman, the air gun company. Woo! See you all soon. Under half an hour, by the way. Proud of myself. See you all later.